Have you noticed garden center transplants, just like these, are getting super expensive? In this video, I'm gonna show you some tips on how to get free transplants from the garden center, and it's 100% legal. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So first of all, I have to say, I hardly ever buy transplants. They're very expensive, way more expensive than buying seeds. And they're actually, you get less variety than if you were to look through a seed catalog. And depending on the transplant, they could actually be less robust and actually grow slower than just planting the seed to begin with. So what are the advantages to transplants from the garden center. Well, if you choose the right ones, they will be off to a faster start and they will give you an earlier harvest than having to plant the seeds and wait for that whole process to take place and then take care of them until fruiting time. They can also rescue you from a mistake. See my video yesterday. Or they can rescue you from pest and disease issues that wiped out your seedlings and you just don't have the time or the heart to start all over again. Let's face it, it's much easier to go to the nursery and buy nice big transplants than it is to go through the seed starting process. Not quite as rewarding, but easier. It feels like, especially on YouTube, there is some kind of taboo around buying garden center transplants. The thing out there seems to be if you don't grow it from seed, you're not a real gardener. Let me know in the comments if subconsciously you've kind of picked that up on YouTube. And I might have put it out there myself, not even knowing. I'm not sure where that all came from, but there is no shame in starting your garden from transplants. Due to an issue I had this year, uh, I, my garden is way behind where it should be. Now, normally I wouldn't care because I have a long growing season here and it would just push everything off a little bit. But this year, I'm actually having a professional film crew come to the garden to do some filming for a project that's not mine. So I can't let you know what it is yet but hopefully soon. And I wanna have something more for them to look at than you know all of my garden being only a foot tall. So I'm kind of behind the eight ball. I really don't have time to sow everything from seed and just have it camera ready in eight weeks. It's not gonna happen. So a little over a week ago, I went to a, a local garden center and I bought a bunch of transplants. I'm still growing seeds because I'm gonna have things at different um, ages when that camera crew comes, but I definitely want some plants that are grown and producing. And so these transplants will give me that in eight weeks. When I was at the garden center, I realized how much of a taboo there actually is because I ran into a viewer there who came up and talked to me and she had transplants in her cart and was actually a little embarrassed about it. I could tell. Well, I could tell, and she said that. And I told her, hey, look at my cart. It happens, there's no shame in it, don't worry about it. The main disadvantage, um, other than the variety you get from seed, is the cost of the transplants. Some of it just doesn't make financial sense at all. Like I saw a pot this size with one head lettuce in it. It cost $5. Now, I don't know where you are, but I can go to the local organic grocery store and get a head for probably a little less than $5, and I didn't have to water it, feed it, grow it for a couple of months. Cabbage is another one. You get one cabbage head, might be huge, but one cabbage head from one seed. And it takes a long time for cabbage to pr produce. I mean, I planted mine in, what, October, November, and they're just now, uh, most of them are ready to harvest. In fact, if you're not subscribed to our homestead channel and you're interested in making sauerkraut, we're gonna be doing a harvest of this um, cabbage and making sauerkraut on one of our next videos coming up very soon. So Next Level Homestead, go check it out. So it would be $5 for that cabbage at the garden center, and then months and months of water and food and care to get one cabbage head. So you really want to buy things from transplants if you're want, wanting to save money uh, that produce a lot of fruit over a long period of time. And then that makes it somewhat worthwhile. 
But there are other things that you can do, little secrets that garden centers don't want you to know about that can maximize your dollar. So let's go over what I spent last week at the garden center on these transplants. So I have six packs here, little six cell things, and then I have um, pots just like this. The six packs were $4.99. The pots were also $4.99. So I could get six plants for the same price as I can get one. Now you might think that in that one plant, maybe it's a little bit bigger, a little bit, little bit further along, but take a look. It's not always the case. Not to mention a lot of times in a pot, especially if they've been growing there a while and they're large, they might be a little bit root bound. Like this one might be. I can't even get it out right now. And so that has stunted their growth. So when you put in something like that, that has its growth stunt, that sage, it smells so good. <sighs> something that's had its growth stunted in a pot like this versus newer, maybe even smaller uh, transplants that come in a six pack, as long as they're not root bound, they can take off even quicker than a larger plant in a larger pot. So when you look at anything at the garden center, I really recommend that you loosen it up, pull it out, and just make sure that the roots look good. That they don't have, they're not spiraling around and around at the bottom and you see more roots than soil. You don't want that. Put it right back and check for another one. So price-wise, in almost all cases, six packs are gonna be your best bet. That's why I don't shop for transplants at Home Depot or Lowe's or some of your big box stores because they really carry mainly Bonnie plants and they only come in a larger pot for a larger price tag. Now, one thing you wanna look at, and it can be, uh, can make a pot like this, so if you are, if all you have is a big box store um, and you can only get pots like this, look for one that has multiple seedlings growing in the same pot. This one has three, this is butternut squash. I can get three different plants out of my 4.99 here. So still not as good as 4.99 for six plants, but it's better. And then look at the six pack here of okra. There are two to three okra plants in each cell. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15 okra plants for $4.99. That's a good deal. Not as good as seeds, but we're not talking about that right now. Or look at this basil, a six pack with probably 50 to 100 transplants in here. Now, I'm not gonna be able to separate each individual basil plant out. They've got great root systems, they're not root bound, uh, but I can divide it. So how I would divide this is I would just tease it apart. So these okra first, just kind of tease them apart. You can actually dunk them in water and get most of the soil off of them. That makes it a little bit easier to uh, separate the roots. and then get a clean six pack with some pre-moistened potting soil, and then just gently plant them right into that soil. Try to spread the roots out a little bit, don't make them one big clump, and try to hold your plants by the leaves and not the stem. A leaf rips off, your plant can still live. Same thing with the basil, it's just gonna be a little bit more tedious of a surgery because there's so many more plants here but I always love to see how many I can get singled out and separated out of a clump like this. Now you can also plant these after you divide them into the ground directly. Um, I prefer to put them back in a six pack or something like this so you can control them just a little bit better. I'm actually gonna take these and protect them uh, because when you do, you've done a little bit of surgery. They've had roots broken, they've been handled. So I'm going to put them in the house under my Viper Spectre grow light for about a week or two until I really see that they're starting to grow. They've got a couple of sets of leaves on them, new sets, and then I will put them outside after hardening them off. Now I'm using the Viper Spectra K55000. I did a review video on this uh, a few weeks ago. I'll link that down in the video description. It's a great light. It's uh, large. It covers a large footprint and it can grow your plants. So if you're looking for indoor growing, 
this is a great light for that. It can grow them from seedling stage all the way through fruiting and flowering all the way through adulthood. Now, if you are planting them directly into the ground, if you don't wanna take the trouble to go through those extra steps, make sure you put some potting soil in the hole. Don't just put it in the garden soil. Those roots are used to very fine soil and they want to be able to kind of grow through that and get a little bit older and more mature before they head into your heavier garden soil. So just make a little nest and, and put them in there, water them in well, and they should take off just fine. By far, my favorite way to uh, get plants started, vegetable plants, is by seed. More variety, save you money, but in a pinch, or if you need it, or you just don't have the time to look after seedlings, these are some tips that I hope will help you out. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time.